Hey guys, Carl here. Today we're gonna to be talking about the Sony A6700. I don't have one yet, but I do have this A6000. And we're gonna be comparing the A6700 specs to the OG A6000 and see if it's worth the extra, at this point, like 1500 bucks. Cause you can get these guys for pretty cheap. So let's, let's break it down. Let's start with design. So the design of the A6700 is a little bit more robust, a little bit bigger of a body than the A6000. It's got a little bit deeper of a hand grip. It's got a little bit wider of a body. The specs wise says it's a little bit heavier. I haven't had one in the hand yet, so I can't tell you for sure, but I know that it's a little bit bigger of a body overall than the A6000. If you're looking for something that is pocketable, you know, a little kind of pocketable, then the A6000 might be a better choice for you still. So the deeper grip on the A6700 will give you a more confidence inspiring feel to the camera. This camera, it does feel very small. I've, I've kind of a bigger hand and on this guy, you can see in my hand, it looks kind of small. Um, it's not a bad thing by any means. I just think that, you know, a bit, a little bit bigger of a body does inspire more confidence when carrying it around. And it just kind of feels a little bit better in the hand overall, but is it worth the money? We'll keep going. A big thing about the body that you don't get on the A6000 is weather sealing. This camera, it's not touted as fully weather sealed and the A6700 is. So that is something to keep in mind. Um, I would definitely think about this camera uh, in the elements, the A6000 that is. If I'm gonna take it out in rain or things like that, I think I'd be a little more cautious with it as it's not fully sealed like the A6700 will be. It has all that newer um, sealing stuff to it, different IP ratings. So I'll put those up on the screen right now, the different IP ratings for both cameras. If I'm wrong, uh, I'm just reading off the internet. So if I'm wrong, then uh, then I'll, I'll put that up here also. Say they're the same or something. So moving on to the heart of the camera, the sensor. The A6000 boasts a 24 megapixel sensor, whereas the new A6700 has a 26 megapixel sensor. Will you notice that difference? Absolutely not. You will not notice two megapixels. What you will notice, however, is improved image quality, enhanced dynamic range, and better low light performance out of the new sensor, as it is the same sensor that's gonna be in the FX30. This does mean you can capture more detail in your shots, as this sensor, as it's great, it is older and the newer technology will be better. Another big one you're gonna notice is autofocus. The autofocus on this A6000 is pretty good. And for its time, when it first came out, it was almost, if I dare say, revolutionary in how fast it could autofocus uh, and face track and everything. Pretty cool little camera. Now the A6700 does take it like five steps forward and it is including all of Sony's new technology when it comes to autofocus. Uh, it doesn't have the AI autofocus built into it, but it does have all their newer stuff that they have in, in all their cameras at the moment. So besides the AI side of it. So it will be a big improvement as far as autofocus goes over the A6000. If you're worried about autofocus and you're just, you know, if you really want this camera for you know, work or something to carry around and you really rely on autofocus, the A6700 might be a better option for you. But if you're someone who shoots some manual lenses or doesn't really care about autofocus so much, then the A6000 still in my eyes would be a pretty good purchase. It just depends on your budget and what you're looking for. Both the A6000 and the A6700 can shoot 11 frames per second. So you're not really gaining or losing anything in that respect. You might end up with more photos in focus and spot on with the A6700 just because of the new autofocus features and the increased dynamic range and, and probably better low light autofocus also. So there is that if you're shooting sports or wildlife, um, the A6700 might be a better option for you if you're the you know person shooting a, your son or daughter's basketball or you know soccer game or whatever it is, touch flag football. I don't know, I'm not a sports guy. But if you're shooting something like that, or you know, I mean, if you're shooting professional, you probably are on something else, but regardless, the A6700 and the A6000 
you're not gonna notice a big difference there. You might just end up with more photos in focus and locked on than you will with the A6000 if you're shooting uh, wildlife or sports or fast shutter speed stuff. Now the biggest difference between these two cameras will really come down to the video specs. This guy, the A6000, only shoots 1080p at a max frame rate of 60 frames per second. No log profiles, no, I mean, you do get a few color change profiles, you know, like a flat profile and things like that, but it's nothing like S-Log 1, 2, or 3. And you definitely don't get a lot of dynamic range out of it. It's gonna be 8-bit. It's not a great video camera, but it is a video camera and you can do a lot with it. And if it's something that you're just, you know, walking around and you just want something in your pocket, this is definitely not gonna be a bad choice. That said, the A6000 boasts all the video specs from say like an A7S 3 FX30, FX3, you know, whatever. It has all that stuff now. So you're looking at 4K, 120 frames per second, it's crop sensor, so you know it's going to be basically the same settings you would have on the FX30. So great low light, dual ISO, S cine tone. Uh, you can go to 240 frames per second in 1080p. I mean, they're giving you everything with this little baby camera, which is pretty cool for someone who just wants something to walk around for 1,700 bucks. I think is what the price of it is. That's where you really win with the A6700 is in the video side of things. You're going to destroy the A6000 when it comes to video. Just the 10 bit alone, even shooting in just a regular base profile is going to look better and be sharper and cleaner than this camera right here. Uh, is now it, a lot of that depends on lenses. A lot of that depends on um, lighting, uh, where you're shooting, what you're doing. A lot of that is dependent on that. You can make this camera look great. And that just depends on what your lens situation looks like, where you're shooting, your lighting, all that stuff that I just said. But you're gonna get a lot more out of the A6700 when it comes to video, just plain and simple. That's where that money does shine if you're looking for something that can do both things really well. If you're just looking for a photo camera, all day, all day, buy it super cheap. Keep on going with it as long as it'll last. They last a long time. Uh, I have had some people in the comments of other videos I've made on the A6000 say that their shutter gave out, their EVF gave out, you know, whatever it is. But uh, for what it is, it's a great choice. So, the battery life of the A6000 kind of sucks. You're dealing with these old uh, NP FW50 batteries. They finally updated the A67 to a bigger capacity battery. So that is something that's gonna be pretty nice to have. You get up to 800 shots per battery uh, in the new A6700. Whereas with this guy, I wanna say it's somewhere in the range of like five. I'm being sarcastic. It's somewhere in the range of like 500, 400 or 500 shots to this. That does deplete over time as the, you know, battery degrades over time, but that's, that's what that is. So battery life is a big improvement on the A6700 also. So the A6700 takes all the great things from the A6000 up through the 6500 and all those little cameras that they've kind of built out in the in between. Um, it's going to be a better camera than all of those as far as what you get for your bang for your buck. 10-bit 422, 120 frames per second in 4K. You know, obviously it's going to be kind of my, limited as far as your recording time and all that kind of stuff, but it's gonna be a better camera. Does that necessarily mean that you should run outside and buy it, or if you are in the market for a camera right now, should overlook the A6000, the A6300, A6400, A6500, however many other ones there are, ZV-1, ZV-E1, there's too many to count. But does that mean you should overlook all of those other cameras because this is just the new thing that came out? And the answer is no. You should definitely look at these cameras because if you don't need some of those things, then why spend the extra money? You could save that money and put it on a lens or something like that. I've made a lot of mistakes when it comes to spending money on gear. And I'm just trying to help people along the path find a camera if they're into photography or if they're just looking for something that they you know, want to pick up and use as a hobby or just take photos out with friends or whatever it is if you don't want to use your, fo your phone all the time. I just want to help people find a camera that can do those things without breaking the bank. 
because we all know we could go out and buy the A1 with a 24 to 70 zoom lens and it would take amazing photos and do a great job for you, but it's also gonna be nine grand. So it just depends on what you specifically are looking for and how much you wanna spend and what you're doing with it. So with that said, I'm gonna stick with my A6000, partly because it's paid off and it's very inexpensive and it's just fun to use. That's all I've got. Hopefully you guys got something from this. Check out the A6700, I think it's a pretty cool camera. If you're in the market for something new, I would take a peek at it. If not, let's stick with old trusty cameras. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Make sure to hit that thumbs up if you'd like to. Subscribe if you haven't. 